it's me, Michaela Marie, AKA Macaroni Pony. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is the beginning of, or the precursor to, a sort of series of videos that I'll be making in the near future um, for my channel about the different generations of the My Little Pony toys. So this video, I'm going to give you an overall, just kind of like a taste, an overall idea of each of the generations thus far. And then I will begin making a series of videos where each individual video is dedicated to one specific generation. So without further ado, let's take a look at the evolution of the My Little Pony toys through the generations. These toys have gone through a lot of reincarnations over the past 40 years. It all started in 1981. With this. This is Hasbro's My Pretty Pony toy. She was a larger, harder plastic um, styling toy pony that Hasbro was marketing to preschoolers. Her eyes can blink on both sides. She used to have, um, before she came into my possession, a lever under her chin um, that you so you could tickle her chin and she would wiggle her ear and wink one of her eyes or wiggle both her ears. I also have read in some places that she was also supposed to swish her tail, but I'm not sure how accurate that is. So this is My Little Pony Generation Zero, when ran for one year in 1981. This is the first release of My Pretty Pony. There was also a brown pony variant that didn't have these white patches on the front of the legs. And there was also a pink My Pretty Pony released with a heart pattern on the flanks. And collectors often refer to the pink My Pretty Pony as My Pretty Pony Peachy because she resembles the peachy My Little Pony that was created later on that a lot of collectors are familiar with. Speaking of My Little Pony later on, Hasbro decided to redesign and remarket the My Pretty Pony toy, changed the name to My Little Pony, and made six different colored versions of a little pony that still had a soft mane and tail and could be styled and accessorized but in a variety of colors that children could collect. They were also starting to market towards a slightly older audience with My Little Pony than they were with My Pretty Pony. So this is the first generation or G1 of My Little Pony. The first generation of My Little Pony ran from 1982 to 1995. G1 of My Little Pony is so far the longest generation of My Little Pony, totaling about 14 years. But back to this pony. This pony's name is Minty. She is stamped 1982 on the bottom of her hoof here. Speaking of these hooves, this first year of the first generation of My Little Pony, the six colorized versions of this specific mold all have flat feet. In 1983, those same six ponies were remade in a slightly taller mold and with concave hooves instead of flat feet. So every first generation My Little Pony toy from 1983 and on has concave feet like this 1983 cotton candy as opposed to flat feet like this 1982 minty. So thus far, Hasbro has created a total of 12 My Little Ponies. They're all in the same pose with one set being a slightly updated version of that same pose. These little ponies came with ribbons to tie on their tails and a comb or a brush to brush their hair. Hasbro soon created more poses for these ponies. One of the first ponies to be made in one of these new poses was Applejack. See her concave hooves and her 83 Hasbro stamp in her hoof? She is such a darling pony. This Applejack is the first G1 pony that I added to my collection. I was really, really into Friendship is Magic and somehow the information had come across my path that the Friendship is Magic Applejack is one of the main six that is like the closest represented to like they have the most similarities with their first generation counterpart and up until that point i had no idea that the main six had first generation counterparts 
And so at first my collecting of G1 pony toys was just, oh, I just want to have the first generation counterparts to the main six. And then I got Applejack and oh my goodness, I just fell in love. Aren't her freckles just so cute? And the cutie mark, it's on both sides. Do this again, Hasbro, go back to doing this. They didn't call them cutie marks back then. I don't know if they just called them like their markings or their pattern. But cutie mark wasn't a term that was coined until G3 at the earliest. Another new pony pose and Friendship is Magic counterpart is Posey. Posey is credited with being the inspiration for Friendship is Magic's Fluttershy. I think she's darling. In addition to all these new fun pony poses, Hasbro also started creating Pegasus ponies and unicorn ponies. This Pegasus Pony is named Firefly and is accredited to being the inspiration for Friendship is Magic's Rainbow Dash. And this unicorn's name is Glory and is accredited as being part of the inspiration for Friendship is Magic's Rarity. I love both of these ponies. I think that they are so, so cute. And I've decided to limit this video to main staple generation adult pony regular size brushables. So I won't be talking about like sea ponies or baby ponies or flutter ponies or anything like that in this video because it just the list was too long guys this video just would have been way too long but i'm really looking forward to showing you baby glory in a future video a couple more first generation fourth generation counterparts this is g1 twilight and is accredited with being the inspiration for friendship is magic's twilight sparkle and this unicorn is named moon dancer if you're a fan of Friendship is Magic and she looks and sounds familiar to you, there is a fourth generation moon dancer that is Twilight Sparkle's friend in Canterlot. I do not personally own a G1 counterpart to Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie's G1 counterpart is a Pegasus pony named Surprise. Surprise is a white Pegasus pony with a yellow mane and tail and a yellow balloon for her flank pattern. And at this point in my venture to gather the main six as G1 counterparts, I had just fallen in love with the generation entirely and wanted to explore everything it had to offer. But that is all the G1 we have time for today. Moving on to the second generation of My Little Pony, which started in the year that I was born, 1997. This is a second generation My Little Pony. Her name is Sundance. Sundance is the only G2 My Little Pony to have a G1 My Little Pony name. I do not personally own a first generation Sundance My Little Pony, but I am familiar with what she looks like. She is a white pony with a pink mane and tail and pink hearts for her flake pattern. Personally, her design reminds me of the nurse pony from Friendship is Magic. This incarnation of Sundance is specifically the Magic Motion Sundance. She has a clear plastic part at the base of her tail, and when I twist it, her head turns. The second generation My Little Ponies also have a different hoof style than the first generation ponies did. And these new My Little Pony toys were just a significantly different size, shape, and style that the version of My Little Pony that people had already had for 14 years. They went from this to this. So understandably to most people, including myself, the second generation of My Little Pony did not do well. The second generation of My Little Pony was only on the shelves in the United States for two years, 1997 and 1998. I also have Magic Motion Tipsy Tulip, Except that Tipsy Tulip's um, tail base is different than Sundance's, which I always thought was interesting. But I twist the base of the tail and Tipsy Tulip's head can spin all the way around. Some find it unsettling and I don't blame them. I personally really like the style of the second generation My Little Ponies, but this was my first exposure to the toy line. My parents gave me these ponies as an infant. I had never seen a pony of any kind before. And so I can totally understand how someone who had had the first generation of My Little Pony for 14 years and then was switched to this. <laughs> I, can, I can see why they wouldn't go for it. My favorite second generation My Little Pony is Ivy. Ivy came in the second generation Pretty Parlor which actually has the same mold for the building itself as the first generation Pretty Parlor. 
two of the things that I specifically really like about the second generation ponies is that they still have their flank patterns on both sides of their bodies. And the second generation of My Little Pony, also they all had these little sparkles in their eyes. And I think that is so cute. Another different thing about the second generation of My Little Pony that contrasts in comparison to the first generation of My Little Pony is that a canonic male pony was one of the first toys to be produced. This is Clever Clover, and he was one of the very first ponies to be created in the second generation. Sundance is accredited with being like the front runner of the second generation of My Little Pony. There's been a lot of reincarnations of her and she appears frequently on the packaging for the second generation toys. But beyond Sundance, there wasn't really like a main six or a core seven or anything like that. Unicorns in the second generation of My Little Pony were incredibly rare. The US never got a US unicorn. There was only a European unicorn release. And as far as I am aware, there were no second generation Pegasi. I do believe that there was one line of toys where they had these like clip on wings, but they weren't actually a part of the pony itself. And that's G2. But Hasbro bounced back fast with a new release of My Little Pony in 2003. This is G3 Applejack. Hasbro resurrected a lot of first generation My Little Pony names for G3. One of those names and general character concepts was Applejack, as well as Cotton Candy. Hasbro also created new pony names, like Rainbow Dash. Although first generation Firefly is accredited with being the inspiration for Friendship is Magic's Rainbow Dash, we can definitely see how Rainbow Dash gets some design elements from the third generation. Although these regular ponies were the most common characters in the third generation of My Little Pony, G3 did have a few unicorn ponies and Pegasus ponies. This purple Pegasus pony's name is Star Song, and this pretty tropical unicorn is named Sunrise Song. This rendition of Star Song has glittery wings and tinsel in her mane and tail, and this unicorn pony has glitter on her muzzle and her horn. Very cute. Moving on from G3, there was a transitional or half generation of My Little Pony known as G3.5. I have decided that I will not be talking about half generations in this video. Which brings us to 2010, with Friendship is Magic. The ponies in Friendship is Magic were heavily inspired by the ponies of the third and first generations. Here you can see how Applejack evolved over time. There is a third generation pony named Fluttershy with a butterfly cutie mark, but I do not have one personally. Now you can really see how fourth generation Rainbow Dash is very much a blend of first generation Firefly and third generation Rainbow Dash. G4 Rainbow Dash has a lightning bolt incorporated into her cutie mark and is a fast flying daredevil pegasus. And the third generation Rainbow Dash has a rainbow and cloud incorporated into the cutie mark with multicolored hair and a blue body. Here's Glory and Rarity, and Twilight and Twilight Sparkle. The fourth generation of My Little Pony was the first to introduce the Alicorn Pony, with a pony having both a horn and wings. The fourth generation of My Little Pony toys just also took on a totally different size, style, and shape than the generations before, while still paying homage to the names, patterns, and colors of the ponies before them. After the fourth generation of My Little Pony, there is also another half generation 4.5, aka Pony Life, which we will also not be discussing in this video. Which brings us to G5. And in case you haven't noticed yet, I have a My Little Pony A New Generation t-shirt! It has Izzy Moonbow on it, and it says, Never Stop Being Magical. And I like it a lot. So I'm sure it's obvious how excited I am about this new generation. People ask me all the time what my favorite generation of My Little Pony is, and I really don't have one favorite. There are things that I love about all of them. And I'm especially excited that this new generation story is a continuation of Friendship is Magic, that it's held in the same universe. I mean, Sunny Star Scout is probably as big of a Friendship is Magic fan as you and I are. And I think that's really neat. I also think that these character designs are so cute. The hair on these brushable ponies is so thick and soft and vibrant. I do wish that their tails match the quality of their manes. I feel like their manes are higher quality. I feel like this is softer than this, and I feel like this is thicker 
than this. I also really want Hasbro to go back to putting the cutie mark on both flanks on the toys. They didn't really do it in G4, they didn't do it in G3, because the last time they did it was in G2, even though they did it all the way through G1. So it's hard for me to understand why they never did it with G4, and even harder for me to understand why they're not putting the cutie marks on both sides of G5 now. Regardless, I am still very excited for the fifth generation of My Little Pony that we have this year, 2021, and is our current generation of My Little Pony. Today, this day that I'm filming this video is August 11th, and so I'm pretty sure that the first actual trailer for this movie comes out tomorrow, and I'm so ready. So now you have an idea of how this went to this, how this went to this, and then this went to this, and then this went to this, and now this leads to this. I just find it so fascinating. I mean, look at this. Can you imagine having a pony styling toy like this in 1981? <laughs> wow, what a journey. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm gonna hold on to My Pretty Pony for the outro. Because unless I get my hands on a pink My Pretty Pony, I probably won't be doing a whole video dedicated to My Pretty Pony anytime soon. But I've got lots more to say about Gens 1, 2, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, and 5. Yeah, this pretty pony's missing her other ear. But you can't really tell when she's displayed because she's got her hair on that side and she's got her hat on. I like to imagine that there's been a reincarnation of Applejack in every single generation, including Gen Zero, but that's another video. Speaking of videos, thank you so much for watching this one. If you found this demonstration interesting, let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this soon, make sure you hit the subscribe button so we can be pony pals. Do you have a favorite generation of My Little Pony? Leave a comment and let me know. Until next time, bye!